Hi guys, welcome back to a special episode of Coffee with Specs. We are back with uh, a returning podcast member and someone totally brand new who may or may not have worked in an actual MLB organization. So returning, <laughs> returning is our buddy Tim from e of ESM Peoria. Catch him weekdays from three to six. Was I right? There it is. There Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> Three to six on ESPN Radio and PR, ESPN, ESPN PR.com. Tim Van Stratton. Good to hear from you again, man. How are you? Oh, we're hanging in there. We're hanging in there. Baseball's a coming. Baseball is a coming. So I'm, I'm here for it. And uh, that terrible audio quality you hear is from a person recording on a headset, which is hilarious because. <laughs> Because the other person's recording is doing this on an iPad, so we're a ragtag team of professionals here. Uh, former former employee of the Oakland Athletics, uh, Mr. USC Nick himself. Good afternoon. It or is. Good morning. It is 9.44 in the morning. I don't know what you mean by I was by just this. waiting for Tim for so long. I got lost a track of time. Yeah, that's true. That's the, fair. The, the radio. Of, uh, audio problem. Yeah, the radio it diva. really bad all around. The radio diva yep. was being a radio diva. So I made a lot of money in my Oakland Athletics career. A whole fifty dollars for a tour of the stadium. <laughs> Sounds like a win to me. So Nick, do you have inside knowledge of uh, the A's organization from your like thirty minutes that you spent perusing through the stadium? Um, no. <laughs> Okay, very good, very good. But I got to see where Moneyball was filmed, so that was cool. Yeah. How much Those did were it, my oh, interview took place. How much did a can of soda cost? Uh, I don't think I think they got rid of all theirs. That's not surprising. All right, so here's what we're gonna do for this space ball spectacular. We're gonna break, go through every team in each division. You know, we're we're original here, and we'll uh, talk about each team with some fun things they did or terrible things they did depending on what they did and uh we will totally use our baseball know-how to tell you who's going to win the world series because that's what we're gonna do right oh i can tell you that right now shut up dodger it's gonna, fans it's gonna be the dodgers oh what a shock i'm glad we uh we can end the podcast here two minutes and we're good we got it already so, with that being said, let's jump right into this. We're going to start in the NL East, work our way west. So, the first team we get to talk about are the New York Metropolitans, who last year in 2020 finished with a record of 26 and 34. Wow, they were bad. Some of the key acquisitions they had, well, they got Francisco Lindor and uh, Carlos Carrasco were the two big ones in that giant okay. deal. Yes. I don't know where you're going for there. Uh, those are the two big acquisitions. They also got a new owner and daddy, Steve Cohen. So with all that being said, how do we feel about the Mets? I don't care. Beer Nick. Beer Nick. Let's go. I'm, Fine. I'm, I'm pro Mets. All right. We'll go Tim. We'll start off with Tim. We'll go Tim, then Nick, and then. So, yeah. Tim. So, first, Nick, Nick and I had discussed doing something where, like, we would no matter what disagree. Yes. I don't know if that's what we're going to end up doing because I don't know I, if I want to just have to go with whatever the opposite of what Nick says is. I mean, that's just our uh, natural in 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 tendency. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I know exactly what you're going for there. Um. So, as far as the Mets go, well, there's a couple other acquisitions, Brandon. You know, they're getting Marcus Stroman back. He sat out all of last year, and he's planning on being their number two starter. Taiwan Walker was a late addition there. So they, you know, it's been more than Lindor and Daddy Cohen. But, like, I, I can't disagree with Pakoda's projections here. They have him at about a 92-win team. And to be honest with you, you look at the lineup, and you could really, really see where from one through nine, it's going to be a very good lineup. Pete Alonzo, who... Came down a little bit from his great rookie year. Is still one of the best power hitters in baseball. Michael Conforto is a proven guy at this point. Jeff McNeil, J.D. Davis can play all over the field. It's a team that can hit, but it's funny. I, I genuinely do have lots of questions regarding their starting rotation because, you know, Syndergaard is still hurt. I think Carrasco's starting the year. 
um, on the on the uh, IL two with a strained hamstring. So really, you get past Degrom, it's Stroman, Walker, David Peterson, and Joey Lucchese. Yes. It's not exactly a rotation that's you know, great when you look at you know, the lineups they're going to have to be facing with Atlanta, with Philadelphia, with Washington, etc. So. Uh, I'm curious to hear what Nick has to think, but I'm honestly a little bit more down on the Mets, I think, going in than maybe Pakoda is. Yes, I am pro-Mets. I think offensively they're pretty solid with Lindor and now ha- having Lindor and Alf- Alonzo together. And then, yeah, the pitchers, DeGrom's great. So it just depends of how many if those other guys can fall in line and just eat up innings. So, yeah. You're starting- now, does does the Lindor uh, downswing from last year concern any of the three of you? Because last year, and I know that he was, I think, dropped at a point in our four-team fantasy baseball league. But, like, Lindor last year hit 258, hit eight home runs. It wasn't exactly a superstar season. Is that – a concern with any of you guys? I mean, I was more concerned about Jose Ramirez than I was about Lindor, but in terms of do I think it'll carry over? I don't think it will. A lot of a lot of last year see the problem with last year, and you're gonna this is gonna be a repeating phrase, is people who sucked last year, they're gonna get so much leeway going into this year. But the exact opposite for guys like when we get to like the Padres with Tatis, who had an explosive 2020, they'll get written off and say, oh, the flash in the pan. So in terms of that, you're going to get a lot of, no, what are you talking about? It was a short season. That's stupid to not to react like that for a, not even half a year. So short answer, no. But maybe it, I don't think it'll continue. The guy's hitting 388 in the spring. Uh, with an on-base of 440 and 49 at-bats. So at least early on, it's looking like he's somewhat back to form. He's young. There's a lot of volatility. Last year was weird, but I think he'll be fine. So what is the – what's the projection? So Pakoda has him at 92. DraftKings has them at 90 and a half, I think. Where are we feeling on their over-under this year? And Brandon, I guess you can go first. Are we stick 90? I th- I'm going to say under, only because that rotation to start the year is not really deep. Because they go, where is it? Hold on. Uh, like you said, Degrom. Like basically after Degrom, you're it's not as deep. I know they get uh, uh, Thor back sooner than later, but as of right now, you're looking at a a rotation where it's gonna be like last year, where it's just Degrom and everybody else. So, and also, do we trust Edwin Diaz? I mean, Edwin Diaz isn't gonna. I don't think Edwin Diaz has really regained any trust. So for all that, I think they I'm, they might end up he- being closer to eighty nine wins. He was great last year, for what it's worth. I know that the theme of today is going to be like short sample sizes and not looking too much into 2020, but last year he had an ERA of 175 or 1.75 and had 50 Ks in just under 26 innings. I mean, that is, that's exceptional. It's exceptional. So I didn't know if, or are we going to ignore that just because it was only in, you know, 25 innings of work or so? Because I think that that has the potential to maybe put him back back in the conversation for a top three closer in all of baseball. I mean, let's see what happens. But also that division. All right, Nick. That division's also really, really deep. Can I go even? Sure. Just even at 90 and a half? So they're going to win 90 and a half games? Yes, 90. 90, Actually, this one, Fangraph says them as 91.4. So, (laughs) yeah, I think just... I mean, this is new baseball. This is what baseball is today. We're going to do half games. It's actually, you no, know, it's whoever wins innings. Oh, gotcha. That's, oh, that gotcha. Yeah, so it's just like a winning inning by inning. Yeah. That All could right. be fun. I like that. All right, Tim, I like over, that rule. over under Spice on that. Spice up the game a little bit. 
Over under on the Mets? Yep. Uh, I'm going under. I think the division is really good. I and we'll get to some of the other teams here in a bit. And um, yeah, to be honest with you, the starting rotation does scare me a little bit. They don't have a ton of real consistent hitters. They got a lot of good hitters, but like for instance, like Conforto's the guy who's a little bit streaky. We know Alonzo's a little bit streaky. Um, so I just worry a little bit that they're going to be kind of an up and down team throughout. And I just don't know if they're built well enough to, to win 90 plus games in that division. So I'm going to, I'm going to go the under, but I still think they're very much going to be, you know, a, a playoff caliber team, if that makes sense. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be in the race. So continuing up from the bottom, we have the, tw- the reigning full season world champions, the Washington Nationals. Who some let me flip me flip me back here as I scroll through some of these interesting things here. Uh, big signings or signs of interest or acquisitions, I guess is interest is a better turn of phrase. They acquired Josh Bell from the Pittsburgh Pirates. I don't have that trade pulled up because MLB.com won't show me that trade because I don't know what month it was in. But they also got just no Brandon. They got robbed. The Pirates got robbed in that deal. That's all you need to know. All right. Uh, so they got Josh Bell to fill the, the void at first base. They also signed a uh, BR legend, Kyle Schwarber. And <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I forgot that he exists. Yeah, Kyle Schwarber to pl- as also signing. And they also re-signed Brian Zimmerman. They got Brad Hand. Uh, John Lester is another guy they signed. Going into this year, they also signed and released. It looks like they signed they signed Jim Jeffries if you're into that kind of thing. Um, overall, what do we think of the Washington Nationals going into this? Uh, I guess Nick, you can start this one off. Let me see. Here. Well, first off, I can't mention the Nationals without mentioning the best hitter in baseball, Juan Soto. Okay. <laughs> the the dude is a beast. Preach. He is very good. Um. But I don't like their offense outside of him. I don't like Josh Bell. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm down on Josh Bell. Down he, on Josh Bell. Okay. And I had him in my fantasy team because Jake had dropped him. So then I was like, oh, I'll pick this guy up. And then he hits a shit ton of home runs. And then he kind of dropped off in the later half of the year. So I think he was kind of a fat flash in the pan. So I don't think he's going to do much for them this year. Uh, Trey Turner's good, but he can only get so much. There's not much power in that lineup. Well, it could be with Shorber now, but. All right. Um, yeah. No, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, Their Tim. pitching's good, though. Tim. Uh, Nick, and I'm not just doing this because we had <laughs> talked about disagreeing, but I could not disagree more about the state of the Nationals lineup. Not just Juan Soto, but I am absolutely in love with a few of their acquisitions. I think Kyle Schwarber in that ballpark is absolutely going to mash. Keep in mind that he is just two years removed from a 38 home run season in Chicago. I know that it's easy to forget that he exists uh, just because, you know, the hype isn't nearly as big as what it was. But at the end of the day, he could still be one of the premier power hitters, uh, uh, premier power hitting left-handed bats. As far as Josh Bell goes, so Josh Bell, I think you are right in a lot of ways where you look at his first half of 2019. In 88 games in 2019, first half of the year, he hit 302 with 27 home runs. He slugged 648. And then after that, it you know went down a little bit considerably there where it goes from uh, a, a 302 average in the first half to 233 average in the second half, a slugging of 648 to 429. So Clearly, there was a first half to second half difference there. Last year, I think, was just tough when you look at, you know, being in a bad team in Pittsburgh. But looking at his spring numbers this year, already with the Nationals, he's hitting 419 with six homers, 13 RBIs. He's slugging 953 in 50 plate appearances for Washington. So there's something that's clicking right now. And the way that he's looking in spring, I think that it's going to elevate him to a first half that is maybe not quite what it was in 2019, but along those lines. And I think that him in the middle of that lineup, right behind guys like Soto, like Trey Turner, is going to do absolute wonders for him. So I, I truly, I look at that lineup and I see Robles at the top. I go all the way down through, through Schwarber, probably in the five or six spot. And I think that it's one of the best, you know, five or six hitter combinations in all of baseball. So 
I love their lineup. And then you mentioned the starting rotation's really good. And I don't know if Brandon even mentioned John Lester in the rotation. I did. Who John Lester is not once was, but yeah, as a four starter, he's pretty darn good. So still, uh, it's John Lester, the national... he's a baseball legend. <laughs> That's what I said. John, a beer, a beer drinking, chicken wing eating, World Series winning legend, cancer beating, cancer, legend, I might cancer have. survivor. Yes, thank you, cancer survivor John Lester. So yeah, I think that the guy needs a little bit more respect. But it's really everyone's talking about the Mets and their great off season. But to be honest with you, I thought the Nationals had a really solid off season where Bell and Schwarber were huge for that lineup. They bolster the rotation. Brad Hand is a, is an improvement uh, at closer. They've won a World Series. You know, Davey Martinez has a World Series uh, under his belt now. So I, I really, really like the Nationals this year, probably more than most. Nationals are probably going to be very underrated for most of the year. I think people are looking at Josh Bell and saying he can't repeat what he did in 2019. Uh, I But I agree more so with Tim. I think Kyle Schwarber being in a position where all he's going to be told to do is, hey, you're just gonna hit big dick homers. That's all I want. All you have to do is just smash. Just legitimately go out there and smash homers. That's it. Uh, the lineup's really, <laughs> the lineup's really, really deep. Well I, well, I was gonna say too with with Schwarber that the Cubs like to fiddle around a lot with him in the leadoff spot. I they know. like to you know try to move him around all different lines up and ask him to do a bunch of different things. And I think with the Nationals, it's just basically going to be exactly what you said. You're going to be hitting fifth, sixth, uh, and hit home runs. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. you're not going to get cute and try to hit him lead off ahead of Trey Turner and, and any of that nonsense. It's the, just going to be you're in the middle of the lineup, hit homers. Yeah, I think the only thing with him, or looking at this lineup, I think the real big question is, uh, let's say if realistically, I think one through five, they're probably, well, two through five, depending on where Robles is. If you lead off Robles and go Trey Turner, then your two, three, four, five is really, really good. Uh, the only thing I disagree with, and I've shared this before, I think their their third baseman of the future, ben, uh, what's his face? Bomb? No, not Bomb. Kiboom. 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 Is it Kiboom or Kiboom? Uh, whatever it is, it's bust. I'm I'm worried a lot based on the way that he's he does he's not terrible and he does not project as a third baseman, and that's been a gaping hole for them. It's like go out and please get a third baseman if you want. Go get J Ram for all I care. S do something like if they got a third baseman that could actually hit that lineup would be way different. But if they're still high well, on Keyboom, like you're, he doesn't project as a third baseman. I don't understand why they're so high on this guy. Well, they have what? Uh, Starling Castro is a backup option, right? They have um, Josh – or is jo I think Josh Harrison's still there, but yeah, Josh Harrison might there. be playing more – Like Hernan uh, Perez was there. Yeah. Shooter. So, like, they have they have other options, but, yeah, like, I was looking at, at Kai Boom, Key Boom's numbers. Uh, according to baseball reference, it's Key Boom, so you were right there. Okay. In spring training, he's hitting buck thirty three. Uh, he's gotten near 50 plate appearances. He has um, three extra base hits. Like he's just been terrible. So, yeah, I, I, I'm losing. I'm losing a lot of confidence in him too. Just worth noting, as of the 28th of March, they don't have a starting second baseman nor third baseman. It is quite literally just Josh Harrison at both spots. So you might get a weird thing of Ryan, old man Ryan Zimmerman might have to play third. Because they do not have a actual. He's not gonna. He's not gonna play third. But I thought they have Starlin Castro who could play third base. Starlin Castro is not on the active roster. I don't think because I don't see him. He has a oh. day to day hamstring in injury. Okay. In injury. Injury. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Oh, He'll yeah. be fine. Castro will be at third. Harrison will be at second. It's not ideal. They would love Keyboom to be there, but Keyboom uh, he, can't. He's, hit. Like this is. They have no other choice. All right, so. so Let's wrap. Let's put a bow on the Nationals here with our uh, over under for them. Uh, I got them at eighty five wins on my sheet. I don't necessarily know what you guys, what you're seeing them at. But uh, I got um, Pakoda has them at eighty, like eighty three. Okay, more or less. Draft Sportsbook has them at eighty four and a half. So right around the eighty three, eighty four range. I'll just tell you right now. I'm taking the over. I mean, over. I, if I didn't make that clear. Just my, my gushing over them before. Uh, I, I have a lot more confidence in them. I honestly think they'll finish ahead of the Mets in the, in the standing. So 
yeah, I got the over on the Nats. Nick? Uh, over under 84? Yeah, we'll go 84. Yeah, let's go, let, yeah, let's go like 84. Okay. Uh, that's tough. I swear to God, you say push again. Yeah, I won't say push. I'll say under, just to disagree with Tim. And then oh I, God. I'm with Tim on this one. I'm gonna say over. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna surprise people. All Nick, right. What, it's... Pre- what? For the huh? Mets and also this. What was your actual prediction for the Mets? I said I think around ninety games. Ninety wins. I think so that's think a, like right yeah, now? ninety wins. Okay. All so. right. Moving on to the Phil, the Fighting Phils, who had arguably the worst bullpen in baseball in 2020 they had a record of 28 and 32 uh their big transition their big acquisition was getting uh left-handed reliever jose alvarado from the tampa bay rays in a three-team deal that also garnered them a couple of prospects they got a player to be named later from the dodgers and dylan paulson uh went to the rays in that deal and i they flipped garrett cleaver to the dodgers in in that three-team deal. Apart from that, they had a lot of fixing and re-signings. They re-signed JT Ruamuto. Uh, in terms of that, that sums it about up. Not a giant offseason for the Fighting Phils. But they look to be in a hopefully a better position. Oh, yeah, they also signed a longtime Angels awful catcher, Jeff Mathis, who's now just an ageless wonder to a minor league deal but in terms of the fighting fills i'll lead this off with them i'll lead off with them this go around uh when it comes to the fills i they have so many oh they got archie bradley how did i forget about archie bradley uh when it comes to the fighting fills in this division i think they're gonna be they're destined to be a third place team honestly uh they're pitching apart from they have a good top with nola and wheeler but everybody else is mid at best uh, lineup wise, r- room they'll swing. They're gonna hit a. They'll hit really well. Alex Baum's an absolute dynamo and a stud in the making. Uh, but apart from that, you got a lot of aging stars. You like you got Andrew McCutcheon, who's not exactly a spring chicken anymore. Uh, D.D. Gregorius is getting up is on over thirty. Gene Segura uh, down year. Bryce Harper is there until the end of time, but offensively they'll hit i just don't know if they necessarily have the pitching or the bullpen to fix it to keep up with guys like the mets and 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 the nationals but i they'll compete they might be a wild card team but i overall the i think the mets are gonna have a or the mets the phillies are gonna have kind of a met year at best i think they're similar to the angels in the regard of they're gonna be like purgatory until they fix some things so, uh, Nick, what are, you, what are you thinking about them? In regards to their lineup, I like them more than the Nationals. Um, but that pitching is just its just not there. So I think that's going to be tough. Tim? So, yeah. Yeah, Matt Moore and Chase Anderson in the back end of that rotation, I'm just seeing it's not exactly the uh, – the, the thing that inspires a ton of confidence with me. I, I'm kind of along the lines with where you guys, like their lineup isn't bad. And certainly like McCutcheon is, I think can still be decent. Real Muto and Harper are both really good. I think Alec Baum just proved a lot last year that he can be an everyday guy. I don't know if he'll hit 338 for an entire season, um, but like he'll, he'll be a good player, but I don't know. So I, there's always been something just a little bit off with them. Like they don't really we have a center fielder. Uh, I think Odubel Herrera right now is slated to be their starting center fielder, and he's a non-roster invite. Like, they brought him back to Philly. So, he's not really someone that I, I think it can be an everyday guy. Um, behind Nola, I don't love anyone else. Like, Zach Wheeler is okay, but I think he's just going to be one of those guys that now he's close to 31. He's just going to get worse and worse. And the bullpen's just bad. Like, I know that they've added some people like Alvarado, Archie Bradley, but it's not a good pen whatsoever, and I think that it's going to just absolutely kill them as the year goes on. So I, I, there is a lot of skepticism about the Phillies just because of those moves, just because of the division they're in. I'm looking at you know win totals right now, and like DraftKings has them at only 80 and a half. So it's not like this is a team that's getting wildly overrated as it is. But yeah, I'm I'm 
more along the lines like the Phillies will be close to that 500 team. I think that that 80 and a half is actually right on the money. And and it's a very good comparison, Brandon, to, to the Angels, just kind of right there in that middle ground where they're not – they have, like, big names. They have great players. But it just doesn't feel like a true, complete team. Like, there's just too many other holes that require them from, from getting to the next level. So, yeah, I I'm, I'm think I'm right around that 500 mark with them. Yeah, so we'll we'll start with the records. Uh, I think they're five hundred. I think they're gonna basically be eighty one and eighty one. So I guess I technically have to take the over on the eighty, but it's gonna be like one game. <laughs> so tech over technically on eighty wins for them, Nick. I'll take the under. They're unless they drastically improve pitching and during the season, they're not gonna do much. Tim, I yeah, I, I like like naturally if let i'm assuming atlanta is going to be a, a team that we all think is going to do pretty well um the nationals are going to be no worse than mid 80s the mets could be a 90 win team so naturally like you're going to have some teams that finish well below that and i think the phillies are just going to be one of them so i'm with nick i'll take the under i think that they're probably like a 77 or 78 win team this year all right do we like do we like Bryce harp by the way as much as as we we used to because i do I, like, I like him a lot. I, 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 yeah, I to me, I, people just aren't really talking about him just because the Phillies are kind of just right where they are right now. But he had an okay year last year, certainly power-wise. He had 268, which isn't too far away from where he hits normally. But he got on base like a fiend. He hit a ton of home runs. Uh, he's been incredibly durable the last few years. So I, I think that he'll... He'll put up like really good 35, 40 home run numbers, but I just didn't know where if you guys thought that he was still in the conversation as like one of the 10 or 15 best players in baseball. The guy's mashing this spring from, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Let me see what his numbers are before we move on here. Isn't he like this? Yeah, he's got he, uh, 330 average, 733 uh, slugging. So it's like a uh, 1207 OPS in 13 games yeah i mean he's hitting the ball well and, and it, he always mm. seems to start a season well i'd like to see what his month by month split is because i feel like he just mashes during april i honestly if i had to put like a guy to keep an eye on i think harper is gonna have a monster year this year i think you're gonna see I like him a lot I, i'll i'll go on i'll i'll make a steaming take right now i think bryce harper is gonna be an mvp contender most of the year is that really a steaming hot take? <laughs> I don't know if it's a steaming hot take, but I, I think we it, all like, disagree that he's one of the better I, no, players. No, no, no. In baseball, but what I mean but... is, if you were to look at like the, if you're looking at like the NL overall, and you're saying like, oh, MVP is going in this year, you're gonna say Mookie Betts, you're gonna say Cody Bellinger, you're gonna, <laughs> you'll probably say like Freddie Freeman again. You'll say like Lindor. Lindor is gonna be one. You'll, you'll probably go with Real Muto over Bryce Harper, honestly. Like looking at all that, like or buy Bi like bias might have a bounce back here. Like in the top five guys, does he even make like top five like guys you think would be in the MVP race? That that's my only point where I'm saying like Probably. I I can see him going like forty eight, one hundred and thirty, and batting like three ten, but he wouldn't get like the attention I mean, of somebody care. else per I mean, se. No, I get what you're saying because I mean like at the end of the day, like Acuna, Soto, oh, Acuna, Bellinger, too. Betts, Yelich. Uh, are all probably guys that would get like consideration because they're all on better teams too. That would all be that be ahead of him and have similar numbers. Are so, we really saying I, the? I don't, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll say the Brewers take. But are you saying the Brewers are a better team than the Phillies? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, we'll get to it, but but they'll have more wins if that's what you're asking. Ooh, we'll we'll, we'll get to that later. A little tease. They'll have more wins. And by the way, I was I wasn't wrong about. His uh, monthly splits, Harper's OPS in uh, April slash March is uh, ten twenty five. The next highest that he has in any other month is nine oh three. So, suck on that, nerds. That's all I got. All right, moving on to the surprise from twenty twenty, the Miami Marlins, who in twenty twenty had a thirty one and twenty nine record, made the postseason out of the NL East, and for the off season they didn't do much of anything in terms of big acquisitions. Uh, one worth noting, they did lose Jordan Yamamoto, who went to the Mets, who will be starting in the minors for them. But in terms of big, like, personnel signings for their team, not a lot to really jump out at you. They did sign Adam Duvall, which is interesting. 
and I believe they got Dylan Floro, it looks like, from the Dodgers. But apart from that, not a lot. Their biggest acquisition, arguably, was get who it was getting a GM as a historical first. That was about it. So the Marlins. <laughs> Tim, what do we think about the Marlins? Oh, we think so many things about the Marlins. Where where could we not discuss uh, the Marlins? <laughs> Honestly, like it's it was a good story last year. Like a really good story. It was fun. It was fun, even though it was their own. Uh, mistakes that led to them all getting COVID in the first place. Um, but anyway, besides that, I digress. <laughs> they took advantage of a lot of seven inning double headers. They took advantage of, you know, sort of that momentum, having to make up all of those games later on. And it, and it ended up working out for them. But like you look at their numbers last year, just on an individual basis. And really there were not a lot of players who had what, you would call like great seasons like Jesus Aguilar came back from the dead a little bit and he was okay um they acquired starting Marte but even he wasn't really any good uh with the Marlins in the the 30 or so games that he played there Miguel Rojas was probably their best player but like I don't know if we're gonna sit here and say that we believe in Miguel Rojas like it's a good story but I don't see it as anything besides that now I will say though I will say that talk to me in two years, and we might be looking at the Marlins as having a top five rotation in baseball. Because oh, yeah. I look at their rotation, and Sixto Sanchez, who was the big prospect acquired in the Real Mudo deal from a couple years ago, is still just 22 years old and I think has a sky-high ceiling. Um, Sandy Alcantara, who was acquired in the Marcelo Zuna deal from a few years ago, just 22 five years old i think he has a ton of potential eliza hernandez is only 25 years old he's got a lot of potential like it's a rotation of all 20 something year olds i think the oldest guy is is hernandez who's still just 25 so like i really think that their rotation could be pretty darn good in a couple years but not quite yet if that makes sense so I mean, it's it's kind of uh, if the Marlins were in another division, I would say maybe they have a chance to fight for another wild card spot. But I think they're just going to be toiling with the Phillies uh, near the bottom of that division. Nick, yeah, uh, I would say dead last in the NL East. That it? <laughs> flash in the yeah, flash in the pan last uh, year. Short short sample size. Uh, here's what I'll say about him. I think Tim's right when we say like they'll be good in a few years i love jazz chisholm i love jesus sanchez i love sixto sanchez i think they got guys that in a few years are gonna say this team's gonna be deadly and then they'll be great when they get all traded away for when they get torn down again brian anderson's a great guy but i think he gets traded this year they have guys that i think are good also stud stud mvp candidate lewis brinson just saying they have him so they always <laughs> they always all-star have hope game. All-star, all-star game, game. lewis all-star perennial all-star lewis brinson so they always have a chance but yeah they're they're gonna be bad this year i think you're gonna see them tear down a lot in this coming like trade deadline um so we'll see like jazz chisholm probably get a lot more playing time uh you'll see yeah, I think who do see. they have to, to trade though? I think they can tra- who that who I think they can trade. I think Brian Anderson would being traded would be like only reason I'm bringing up Brian Anderson. I think he has Brian Anderson and oh my god, where is he? And um, shoot, I just saw him. Garrett Cooper, Garrett Gary Cooper, and oh, yeah. and like Corey Dickerson and Duval. I think all could be and even Marte could be flipped at the deadline, and it just classic Marlins because there are plenty of guys who would take like a Brian Anderson guy to play third for the rest for like half a season. Like they're going to be a team that'll just, and Jesus Aguilar could DH somewhere probably. I mean, you got guys who are going to get flipped and they'll just do what the Marlins do. They're, they're a dead last team. Like they're not, I'm not going to be like, Oh, they might have a chance. No, they're, they're going to suck. So uh, over under on them. I got them at 68 wins. I think that's a generous. I'm going to say, I, I I'm yeah, gonna... Pakoda's got Pakoda's got seventy. They've got him like seventy wins exactly. DraftKings has seventy one and a half. Um, I'm not gonna say that that the sixty something is generous because I do think that maybe their pitching comes along a little bit this year and they're able to be like low seventies. 
I'll actually go ahead and I'll pick the over just on the 71 and a half, but like by a, they win 72 games. Like it's not anything absolutely yeah. crazy. Nick. Yeah. I mean, if we're going 68, I'll take the over just cause that's pretty low, but yeah, I would say on like 70, 73 games, maybe. I don't think it's going to be 73, but I do think over, I think they're probably like 70, 71 ish, maybe, maybe 72, but they're going to suck. Moving on to the winners of the NL East and losers in the NLC. Yes, the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> oh, boy. You, you enjoy that little laughter there, huh? Didn't you? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Braves also didn't do anything necessarily of note, per se, in the offseason. They had a lot of big guys they were, con- they were uh, in talks with. They were in talks with Rosenthal. Yates and all these other guys for the bullpen didn't, the didn't really do a whole hell of a lot there in terms of that aspect. They did sign guys like Nate Jones to a minor league deal. Getting Marcelo Zuna was huge, but in terms of bullpen help, they really didn't get a lot. They lost a lot. Uh, it's worth noting that guys, Shane Green, I believe is still a free agent, but in terms of the, of the Atlanta Braves, Nick, this team, Almost beat your Dodgers in the playoffs. So, what do you like about the A's for, or the A's, the Braves for this year? Uh, I like their offense. Their offense is good. Um, it can't get much better than Acuna, Ozuna, and Freeman. Uh, pitching wise, still probably not there. It's just uh, they got Charlie Morton. Um, so, they're probably. They'd probably be about where they were last year, but it's just hard to tell. Like when you get into the playoffs and you have, and you need that pitching to go seven games. You saw last year, they had that, they had like two pitchers who were really good in uh, Freed and Anderson. But then once you get past that, they kind of just fall apart. Uh, just worth noting, Soroka will be back this year. I just don't know when. Um, Tim. Yeah, the Freed and Anderson are are the future of their rotation. Even though Freed's already twenty seven, but you know, Freed and Anderson are, are the two guys. And I think that a big reason why they felt it was so important to get Morton and Smiley. I mean, if you remember, they got Morton and Smiley, and it was basically like two of the first free agent moves of the, the off season. And those like they got them yeah. well before even the winter meeting started. Well, yeah, well, it's basically it, but like that's basically all they needed too, because I think Nick's exactly right where their lineup is is set. Like, their lineup is great. Their bullpen, you know, Will Smith, Chris Martin, A.J. Minter, like, all those guys are back. Like, that's fine. But they're like, okay, once we get past our first two aces, we need some veterans that can can go out there and can deliver. And, like, Charlie Morton has been doing it for years now where he's steady, he's solid, he's got tons of postseason experience, which God knows this team needs. Drew Smiley is another veteran who I think is, as, as, a, as a four or five starter, is really, really good. Again, as a four or five starter, I, I emphasize that. So there's a reason why they felt the need to get them immediately before the offseason really started to pick up and escalate. So, yeah, they, they addressed that. And really with their rotation, with their lineup, and we also really haven't even mentioned a couple other guys. I know, you know, Acuna, Freeman, Ozuna are the, the focal points, but Albies might be the best offensive second baseman Preach. in baseball. Preach. He might be. Preach. Um, Austin. <laughs> Austin Riley I hate is him. I hate him. still just 24 years old. I, hate I know him. you hate him, Brandon, but you don't <laughs> know how many people have been have been picking him as a potential sleeper, and he's probably their eight hitter. Like, he could hit 30 home runs in the eighth spot for them. They have a couple uh, outfield prospects that are on the doorstep waiting to get called up. Travis Darno, their catcher, had a career year last year. I, I mean, that team, that team, I would be – as much as I like Washington, as much as I think the Mets have improved, I would be shocked and floored if the Braves did not win that division again and, and won it by by a handful of games. So uh, I I think that this team is is destined to be in the NLCS once again. To be honest with you, uh, I love I I love the Braves. I think hearing a lot about them on Twitter <laughs> the last few years or the last year, uh, I think they're going to be really really good. I think it. I guess Soroka is back to start the year. I don't see him on the IL. I don't think. I don't believe so. Is he active? Yeah, he's active. 
Um, when it comes to them, I think they're going to be really, really good. They might need some help in the pen, but every team needs help in the pen, it seems like, when they're contending. Um, I don't... You're... That's what the trade deadline's for. Yeah, no, no. That's I what know. the trade deadline's for. Yep. That's what they do. I know you're high on Riley. I think Riley, at this point, is trade bait for Jose Ramirez. Drew, I love some of their outfield prospects, like Drew Waters, Pache, some of the other guys. Those are the only two ones that I remember, I recall. Uh, they're, I think they're going to be good in a very loaded NL East. I think they're a little bit underrated going into this year. But when you have the rating MVP in Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Alvitz, and Ronald Acuna Jr., also Marcelo Zuna, who was an absolute monster last year, I, this team's going to hit, and they're going to go deep in the postseason. They, I'll, I'll say, I think they might beat the Dodgers in a seven-game series. Just If it goes seven, anything can happen in game seven. So maybe they go to the World Series. I think they're going to be in contention for the World Series all year. But I, I think the Braves are very underrated going into this year. So let's go into wins. Uh, uh, I think they're going to do way better than a lot of How are they of underrated? A lot of people see him as like a third or fourth place team in that division. That that's so in terms of where I think the who who are these people? <laughs> I've hold on, I've literally seen them like at like really low. Where do you? I've seen I'm him serious. really really I'm low. Not just, and I'm not just saying this to you, Brent. I'm saying who are these people? Who who are these people who are thinking that this is it? I you cut out. I don't out. know. I don't. I, I I've heard. I, I I've heard a lot thinking. of people. I've heard a lot of people say they're gonna be. They're a little bit down. I don't agree with them. But a lot of people are really thinking the Mets are gonna be really really high. I I don't know. I personally don't see it, but I think some people see them as a third place team. I'm not one of them. Because I see him at ninety. I see him at ninety one wins. Brandon, I'm just gonna say this. I'm just gonna say this, Brandon. What? Um. If if you are referring to people who are believing that the New York the New York Mets, okay, I'm just gonna point this out. There are people out there who believe that the New York Mets, after a flashy off season, will do better than a Braves team who will only win about 83 games. Like, just say that out loud. It sounds asinine. No, they I be drug test. No, no, it's I, not no, no, going to no. happen. No, I fully. Agree. I know, and I'm not saying you. I'm not saying. <laughs> I think people who have them at third place are absolutely on crystal meth. I think they're absolutely insane. They, I don't know what they're on, but they need to share it with me because I want to, I want to see what weird lizard people they're seeing. They give them this information. So needless to say at, where do you have, they're, they're going to finish over their win. So no, I agree. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent over. So we got two overs, Nick. What about you? I swear to God, you, you're going to, you what's the, what's the number? I saw I'll Nick's go. Nick's gonna say. Uh, I saw ninety-one. Right, so, so, go ahead. No, I said ninety-one. Ninety-one's the over/under. Ninety-one and a half. I'll go slightly under. Of course you are. I think. I mean, I, I mean, the NL East is going to come down between the Mets and the Braves, and I think the Mets just had better pitching. And then, offensively, the Braves are stacked, but it's kind of top-heavy lineup where it's really like probably one of the best in base i mean the best in baseball when you talk about like three or four guys but then after that it kind of falls off a bit so just wait until over the course of 162 games with their pitching i think the mets do a little better than them just wait until they acquire jose ramirez at the deadline just watch wouldn't wouldn't address their pitching <laughs> they'll get jose ramirez and like some bullpen guy i don't know well it'll, it'll happen all right, shifting gears to the NL Central. We'll start off with the worst team in all of baseball, in my opinion. The Pittsburgh Pirates, who last year finished with a record of 19-41. and 41. And, oh, my Lord, they had an offseason that, if you're a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, I am so sorry. They traded away Jose Musgrove. They traded away Josh Bell. They traded away Jamison Tallon. They were selling anyone and everyone to be left with just key Brian Hayes, that poor, poor man. To Nick, what do you think about this dumpster fire in Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
they are bad. Their offense is bad. Um, their pitching is bad. They don't. Yeah, it's just, it's a dumpster fire. It's not gonna. They're not gonna win a single game. <laughs> Tim, what about you? <laughs> Uh, so I have I have to go back. I have to go back. <laughs> did you call him Jose Musgrove? No, I did. No, I said Joe Musgrove. Did I say Jose? I'm sorry. You said you said Jose Musgrove. You said Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> you said Jose Musgrove. I thought I said Joe. What did I? Where I was like, what was I looking at? Where did I get Jose from? I traded Jose Musgrove. <laughs> where did I get Jose from? Where the? I, I, all right. I just worked through it. I don't know. Well. Anyway, anyway, so yes, the point stands. So they they got rid of of Jose Bell, Jose Musgrove, um, <laughs> Jose you know, they, uh, Jose Tyen. They got rid of a lot of guys. Got rid of a lot of guys. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, there's not too too much to say about them. They're really bad. Uh, you forgot about Gregory Polanco. He's kind of the the one holdover veteran who didn't get traded. Who I can't imagine is going to finish the year in Pittsburgh. I just. I, I can't imagine that he is, is long for that team. I like Cabrian Hayes a lot, and yeah. I think MLB.com has him as, like, the ninth best prospect in all of baseball. And yep. I, Listen, he came up last year in a very, very small sample size, actually hit exceptionally well, like 376. Well, it's clearly not sustainable, but he's a good player with a great glove, so he'll be their, their third baseman for the next half decade or so. Um, or until there's young pitchers too. in the rotation. I, I – I like I like Mitch Keller. That's really the one guy in that rotation who I think has some potential. But really, other than that, I there it you are going to find very very few teams who on paper just look worse than the Pirates do. So yeah, I'm of course I'm pretty low on them, as I'm sure a lot of people are. They suck. I'm, I'm, that's, yeah. that's put it mildly. They suck. They're absolutely miserable. Um, I feel bad for anyone who has to play on this team. Lord Jacob Stallings, Colin Moran, Adam Frazier, Kevin Newman. They will all be probably traded for two packs of two, six packs of Coke and uh, that, that missing Coke machine out in Oakland. So over under, I assume we're all taking the under uh, whatever their win total is. I got it at 61, but let's see whatever. Yeah, what I have them at zero wins, so zero I'll wins. take the under. Yeah, we got zero wins from good old Nick over there. Well, guess what, Nick? I'm going with two wins. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So the over? Uh, uh, they will be <laughs> uh, – I'm going to go – I'm going to go under. I think that they're going to – they're they are going to – fall short of the 60 win mark this year because their roster is bad now and it's going to get worse with future trades of Polanco, potentially of Moran, of Frazier. So, um, yeah, under 60 wins. I think that they'll be picking first again next year. The only thing they have going for them is they're in their worst division in the National League. Yeah. That's very accurate, but I mean, even even that can't uh, help them. Yeah. That horrible horrible division had three playoff teams in it last year, just saying. It's true. It's very mediocre. Four? four? They had, oh, yeah. They had four. First, Every, first, had, first, that's first, right. Yeah. All the teams in that division made it except oh, yeah, the Pittsburgh that. Pirates. Everyone allowed was in the playoffs last year. Uh, I say under by a wide margin. Because and the Red, the yeah. The Pittsburgh Pirates absolutely are dog shit. You didn't man- remember the Reds getting shut out in back-to-back playoff games by the Braves? That didn't. Uh, that didn't stay in the memory? I was just thinking last night. I forgot that the Dodgers Brewers series happened. <laughs> so much Me for too, it. entirely. All it right, so irrelevant and meaningless. All right, let's move on. We're going to move on to the Brewers, who are also under five hundred at twenty nine and thirty one. In terms of the off season, again, a very quiet off season for a team that I bet people. I got to look at the transactions because I didn't have it open because I was too busy thinking about. Was it a quiet off season? I feel like they had a pretty good off season, though. No? They signed Jackie Bradley Jr. Let me continue backwards in time here. Uh, they re-signed. They got. They signed Travis Shaw minor league deal. And he made the team. They signed Brett Anderson. I don't see anything. That's February. Let's go to January. Did they sign? I'm still just flipping through. If there's anything that catches my eye, nothing really catches my eye apart from that. Colton Wong, Brandon. Oh Colton yeah, Colton Wong. Wong. 
Colton Wong. Oh, they they also signed uh, Tim Lope off of waivers. So hey, uh, good good on him. Uh, <laughs> Timmy. Uh, they activated Lorenzo Kane. If Colton Wong's your big signing, I think we got other issues. But they still have some guys. They still have. They still, you know, they got Christian Yelich, who's an absolute behemoth of a man. Uh, their pitching's really, really bad. A little, well, I think it's bad. In my opinion. Oh, Brandon. You, oh, my God. Brandon, I'm going to stop, stop everything that you're doing and interject and just eviscerate you, okay? Can I continue before? Can I, can I, can I make my piece? I really want to hear no, Tim's piece. No, no, you no. can't. I, I will mute you. I will go Tony Reale on you and mute your ass. Do I, can, can I go? Sure, fine. Go, go, go. Okay. First of all, you can't say their pitching is really bad when Brandon Woodruff is one of the top 10 pitchers currently going in fantasy baseball drafts. He had a 3 5 ERA last year, Brandon, was averaging 11 strikeouts per if, nine innings. If you their let me second conti- starter, Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns, Brandon, had a 2.11 ERA last year with over 13 strikeouts per nine innings. That one too done? has been great. No, I'm not done. In fact, <laughs> I I'm was just go- getting started. Just getting started. Okay, you go to their lineup and you're saying, "Oh, well, Colton Wong. How could that be the offseason acquisition?" Okay, first of all, Colton Wong is perhaps the best defensive second baseman in all of Major League Baseball. The the change from Keston Hira, maybe the worst defensive second baseman, to Colton Wong. The best defensive second baseman is like five wins in itself. So that is a huge update for them. Kane, Yelich, Hira, Shaw in the middle of their lineup. I think Yelich will be far more like he was in 2018-19 than he was last year. Jackie Bradley Jr. is also one of the better defensive outfielders. Like, you look at that team, it is legitimately one of the best defenses in all of uh, baseball. Woodruff and Burns are solid, albeit the rest of the rotation – yeah, it could go either way. And then a bullpen with Josh Hader and Devin Williams that is probably the two nastiest eighth inning, ninth inning combo in all of baseball. So while it's not the sexiest team, uh, this team is good. And how dare you? How dare you just totally just, like, go over all of their great moves that they made this offseason? Shame on you. Can, good night. Can I retort after this? Can I, can, I, can I make my piece before you just stepped all over me? No, go ahead. Brandon, I was Brandon go- forgot go- that Tim go is ahead. in the Midwest market. I was going to say, Brandon Woodruff, Cobra Burns, like, really, really good. After that, nothing. Bullpen, Josh Hader, Devin Williams, after that, nothing. Do you four guys – will four guys win you a bunch of games in that bullpen? No. The answer is no. No. Wait, would four bullpen guys win? Will four, will four guys win you a majority of your games? It – Two like starters, in two the pitching staff. Brandon, Okay. No, the answer is no. You're acting as if you're acting as if Craig Council hasn't been using his bullpen for like 80% of every major league game for the last four years. Like clear if there's one team, Brandon, that knows how to get the most out of their bullpen guys and overcome a lousy rotation, it's Craig Council and the Milwaukee Brewers. Like that's I, all I'm trying to say here. You, you so, can say it. I, I disagree. Great. I, I fully guys, disagree. Craig Council will get the most out of them. Why? Because he's done that for four years already. I disagree. I think they're I don't think they're gonna be as good as you think they are. I don't think I don't see it. You can Yelich is also just a but Yelich is also like six three one ninety five. That's not a behemoth of a man. I I'm like in terms of stats one ninety. In terms like, of that's stats not a huge difference. Oh, in terms of stats, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you said behemoth of a man, and I think, like, actual physical behemoth. Like Aaron Judge behemoth. Not like Yellow, which is just basically me, except a little bit more in shape. Okay. Yeah, Adam Dunn. Exactly. That's a behemoth of a man right there. Big donkey. I, listen, I didn't want to get so, like, worked up about the Brewers of all teams here, but I, didn't, <laughs> I couldn't just sit there and let you just slander – slander this team who's really consistently been one of the most underrated overlooked teams in baseball for four years running now so anyway continue fine. nick no, your thoughts. fine nick go i think nick's not gonna say anything she's like oh that makes sense at all <laughs> i mean you guys did say a lot uh i would say they're on the edge for me they've got those good players but they also got some just kind of average out so like when it comes down to it, for like Lorenzo Kane, Jackie Bradley Jr., what are those guys going to produce this year? That Lorenzo Kane was down, 
Lorenzo Cain's one of my favorite players in baseball. But it's just, it's hard to project them. I'll, I would say they're about where they are last year. Kind of a little bit above 500 competing in all centrals, just kind of crowded in average teams. Um, all right, over, under. I Nick. could see this. Yeah, go ahead. Nick, over, under. What's the over? What's the number? I'll go. I'll yield to Tim. DraftKings has 82 and a half. I'll go over. Tim, I know you're going to say over. So, just... oh, Over to the moon. Brewers to the moon. I have to say over because I think they'll win more than 82 games, but I don't think it's going to be. I, don't think I mean, they're... I'm thinking like 85 games. I don't think they're a playoff team. That's all like, I think. Oh, for, for context, okay, so for context, and I've seen the NL Central probably with more variance and projections than any other division. Kokoda has Milwaukee at 88 and a half wins. Wow. So, so which is by far and away the most in that division. So, Pakoda's a lot higher on them than, yeah, like, really, really I think the public is. So, you want to talk about an underrated team, maybe they're an underrated team. Probably. Fangraphs has them at about 82.7, but that's also – Yeah, that's what I said. That's a first place in baseball. There. Yeah. yeah. Right. Best in that division. So Moving on to the third place team that division from a year ago. We are moving on to the Cincinnati Reds, who in 2020 had a record of 31-29, and 29, also a playoff team, one of the four out of that central division. As I pull up their transactions, uh, they did lose Trevor. Who did, who what? Did, who's who do they lose pitching wise? Did they lose Trevor? Ba- Tre- yeah, they lost a guy named Trevor Bauer. Who I Trevor believe. Durant. Who, Trevor Durant. Yeah, Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. He he left. He is now on the Dodgers side of behemoth. I'm going to murder you with that goddamn ice. <laughs> um, just the worst. It's just the worst. No I, professionalism. I literally said I'm going to be working with a discount, Cody. I meant that as a, I meant that as a joke, but somehow Nick has turned into Gray Cody. He doesn't. Even I'm know sorry. Who where were we at? Trevor Bauer. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> Trevor Durant. Trevor Durant. Trevor Good Durant. fifth starter. Good solid. He'll be there when we need him. We're not even to the Dodgers. <laughs> Yeah, shut up, Nick. Continue with your Reds, Brandon. They signed uh, Sean Doolittle. They signed D. Strange Gordon, who was released. They signed former Angel uh, Cam Cam Bedrosian. They lost also their closer, Rossiel Iglesias, to traded him to the Angels for Noe Ramirez and others. So not a lot in terms of additions to the team, but they did trade away some guys, but they still have guys like Nick Castellanos. And... Michael Lorenzen, they have Tyler, you know, Barnhart, Trevor, Tyler Stevenson's aging guys like Joey Votto, Mike Moustakis, Eugenio Suarez. So there'll still be a probably above average team with uh, Barry Bonds and reincarnated Jesse Winker. Um, I think. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me look into that one. Continue, continue. It's more of a joke than literalness. But when it comes to the Reds, they got, I think pitching wise, they're meh. Sonny Gray is, I think, it has up and downs a lot. Luis Castillo's not is good. Tyler Mal, I think Tyler Malley is going to be better than people think. But then you got Wayne Miley and Jeff Hoffman, who are not good. But in a division where weirdness happens, maybe they do okay. But I don't see them above a five hundred team. But they'll they'll be there doing what I don't know. But they they're gonna be a bubble team for sure. Do you want to eviscerate me on this one too? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, all right. Come so on. first of all, Brandon. First of all, Brandon, it's Tucker Barnhart, not Tyler Barnhart. All right, <laughs> Tucker. It's Barnhart. Tyler Stevenson. Let's just get that out of the way. It's Tyler Stevenson who I. I swear to God, Ice Man. I swear to God, you're gonna have. <laughs> he to is the worst. Something with just a munching on ice. Who just who just eats ice during a podcast? He is the worst. Can I? I'm gonna queue up the. Like there's wait, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I there eat, are I, a limitless I, amount of foods to eat during a podcast, and probably ice is the very worst of them. I'm just gonna do this real quick. Hold on. 
You'll appreciate this one. I hope. Oh, you guys aren't gonna be able to hear it, but I'm literally. I want to cue up just the show killer sound from from the Levitar show because that's all I'm hearing in my head now. Is just show killer. That's, that's all it is. Show killer. Show killer. Yeah. Okay. May I may I talk? May I talk on the Reds for a second? Yeah, I think Ice Guy will let you. Okay. So I'm just gonna throw a couple things out there. Yes, they lost Trevor Durant, and Trevor Durant had a Cy Young season last year. But these are also some facts, okay? Everything I'm telling you is true. As a team, the Cincinnati Reds in 2020 hit 212. Okay? I will say that again. The Cincinnati Reds as a team hit 212 last year. And yet, they were able to find a way to finish above 500. Moose hit 230. Votto hit 226. Suarez hit 202. Castellanos hit 225. I would be shocked if any of those guys hit, at least average-wise, as poor as they did last year. Okay? That's number one. So there's some positive regression that the offense is naturally going to see. Number two, even without Trevor Durant, the Sonny Gray-Luis Castillo combo hold their one-two punch in the rotation up to any other team in that division, and it's as good, if not better, I know statistically the Woodruff uh, Burns one two that we that we had just talked about is pretty good, but Cubs one two is not nearly that. Cardinals one two is not that. Certainly the Pirates one two is not that. So they still with Castillo and Gray that gives them an inherent advantage there. I know you mentioned Tyler Molly, but I think Tyler Molly actually has a lot of like uh, underrated uh, outlying numbers that I'm sure Nick could could tell you all about with X FIP and all of his. Uh, his, his advanced statistical analysis. But I think Tyler Molly, a guy who is still just 26 years old, is more than capable of taking the next step forward as well. So they're a team that's not nearly as bad as everyone says they are. Now, I will say they're bet their um, bullpen. I have questions, of course. Most of these teams, their bullpen, I have questions. But I think that hitting is good enough. I think Castillo and uh, Gray – are good enough to get this team in that division to around that 500 mark. And and when we get to over under win totals, it's going to be a pretty interesting conversation, but I think that, that they may be better than some people think. Nick. I think these NL central teams are all very similar where they have good players, but they're kind of average in the bottom, like when you fill out the rest of the roster, it's pretty average. So they're pretty similar to the Brewers, I think. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I mean, I like Moustakis. I like Suarez uh, pitching. They're, yeah, they're top of the pitching is pretty good. So. All right. Over under time. It's like, oh. like they had two guys last year who had an OPS of 800 or better. Winker was one of them. The second incarnation of Babe Ruth, uh, who had 932 OPS. Votto was right at 800. Everyone else was below that. So basically, you have an entire lineup, with the exception of Winker, as like below average, like hitters. So naturally, you're going to get a lot more positive regression there to the point where those hitters are going to become more normal. Uh, you're going to have Castellanos improve. Suarez is certainly going to improve, and that's only going to help them in that in that softball park that is uh, Great American Ballpark. All right, so over under on the Cincinnati Reds. I got what number do you have? Uh, I got them at 79 wins, but that varies. I'll take the over on 79 wins. Nick? I'll take the over. I'll, I think I'll take the over as well. They're 500 at least. All right, moving on to the team that committed an actual felony in, the, in Major League Baseball by acquiring Nolan Arenado that do i have to talk we're talking about the cardinals and i don't necessarily do i even have to describe what they did after that or do we just talk about the fact that they just robbed they legitimately robbed the colorado rockies i uh, brandon i would yes i would suggest that you uh do detail the the trade but maybe put like a not safe for work warning warning on this video once you end up posting it yeah i might have to uh, let me, let's see if I can find the, that actual, what was that? T? Can I find it on here? All right. He, wait. All right. So here's good God almighty Colorado traded third base, Nolan Arenado and cast to St. Louis Cardinals for left-handed pitcher, Austin Gomer, third base, 
Elios Montero, right-handed pitcher, Tony Lacy, shortstop, Mato, <laughs> Mateo Gill, and right-handed pitcher, Jake Chalmers. Let me tell you something. The I fact- think the one that really gets me is Ann Cash. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, hey, and only- cash, and oh yeah, and and also <laughs> fifty million bleeping dollars too. The the funny part about this deal, and I think you, I think we all had this conversation of the fact that Nolan Gorman did not go to Colorado, is by far the most shocking part of this deal. That somehow they kept Nolan Arenado and Dylan Carlson, is by far how they pulled that one off. I will never know, but my God, they. They took the Rockies to the cleaners. Uh, oh. Well, I know exactly why. I mean, there's, it's not a Brandon. It's not a secret as to how the Cardinals were able to make that trade happen without parting with Carlson or or um, Nolan Gorman at all. They it's because the Rockies contract. had absolutely zero left. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, that's exactly right. They had his contract. That's just what it is. It's how the Dodgers were able to acquire Mookie Betts without trading. Uh, Gavin Lux or Walker Bueller it's or the, Julio Urias. It's how the Yankees Jeter got. It's how the Verdugo. It's how the Marlins. It's how the yeah. Yankees got Gun, Same thing. got Giancarlo. But looking it's, at it's 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 not a secret. It's contracts that uh, end up being albatrosses to their teams, and the teams are no longer in a position to ask for like these elite prospects because at the end of the day, they just want someone to take the money away from them, take the deal away from them. So that's why. I mean. And the Cardinals swooped in, and, and they've long been interested in Arenado, which helps. They did give up a couple guys. Like, I was telling you about Montero from his time in Peoria, who absolutely raked, and I think he could be a nice player for them down the road. But, like, as a whole, none of those guys are going to be Arenado. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just – this is just what baseball is now. This is just the reality of the sport. So, looking at the Cardinals, do, I, <laughs> I think they're better maybe than people think. I mean, Jack Flaherty is dominant. Michael has had a down year. Rainwright's ancient. Martinez is up and down, but they're, they're good in that front offensively. They'll hit. I mean, Yachty, who cares? Yachty's there just as, because he's going to die in a Cardinals uniform behind home plate. Goldschmidt's an A-plus hitter. Arenado's an A-plus hitter. DeYoung's a better shortstop offensively. Their outfield's absolute meh. Carlson's good, but they'll somehow find a way to win. I'm sure with their ragtag deep outfield of nobodies, we'll see what happens, but they'll be decent. Nick, any thoughts on your favorite team, the St. Louis Cardinals, who have a Bible? Fun fact. <laughs> that's that's Tim's Bible. That's um, Tim's Bible, yeah. Oh, oh, hold on, Nick, 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 Nick. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and start. I need to get this book because I've been meaning to show you guys what this book actually has. So I'll be right back. All right. Okay. Two seconds. I was really hoping this would happen. All right, Nick, any thoughts as we Well, good thing here? Tim's not here because Noren Alonado is going to regress. Oh, here so we much. go. Here we go. The Noren Alonado. And he already did talk. last year in Colorado. He's going to hit like 25 home runs, maybe 80 RPIs. He's going to hit like 260. You hate And they're going to. You hate him. He's just his offensively. He's just he's overrated. The defense. He's good. He's yeah. Gr- defensively, he's great. But he was hitting forty home runs and cores, and he's just not going to do that anywhere else. Does he even need to hit forty home runs though for the Cardinals? I mean, does he? I don't know, but he's not going to come close to that number anymore. Does he even have? But like I said, does he actually have to? But if he hits twenty five home runs, twenty. 25- I mean his. With yeah, him. I'm saying he's, he's still he's he'll do all right. He's just not going to be a 40 home run guy. But it's like I said, does he he's not going to he's not going to be his batting average is not going to be inflated. Just he'll be Jesus that, so. <laughs> By the way, they had before I forget they had a record of 28. They had a record of 30 and 28 last year. Yeah. Got, I'm back. It's the back. Cardinals, so they have black black okay. magic. They'll do yeah. pretty well. You miss so Tim to fill you in. Nick was trash talking Nolan Arenado. Just his bat. Oh, that's fine. I figured. I figured. Yeah. Okay. So this is the book. Thank you, Nick, for drunk ordering this for me. You're welcome. St. Louis Cardinals Bible verses: 101 motivational verses for the believer. All right. 
Have you, by the way, have you read the back of this? I think no, I have picture, not. Right? I have read, yeah. What does it say? I've read it. The St. The St. Louis Cardinals baseball team is the greatest ball club in the world, and so are their fans. But even with the fan base so loyal, it is always good to have a lot of faith and prayer behind you. It can never hurt to lift the Cardinals up. These Bible verses will definitely help when they take the field. Okay, so follow me so far. <laughs> yes. All right, off the top of your head, um, are there more than 101 Bible verses in the entire Bible? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, 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 all right. So the first 50 or so pages are all different verses okay uh-huh. all different ones um proverbs 17 17 john 1 1 matthew 28 19 ephesians 2 8 down the road down the road down the road and then eventually you get to page 53 or so and you get to phil 4 13 i can do everything through him who gives me strength okay right uh-huh. now. this is page 53 in a book of 101 bible verses from page 53 on, every single page is just Philippians 4.13. <laughs> over and over. That and is over the greatest thing and I've ever heard. And over 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 and over, and over all the way through. All no, the way not. through. Saying Phil 413. All the way until the book <laughs> just sort of ends. Oh my god. It's been... half of this book <laughs> is just the same verse on just one page over and over again. Is it at least in different <laughs> translations? Like is it like the new King James no. version, English Standard Version, no, NIV nothing. version? Okay. So That's I have that and at the end and then at the end and then at the end it just says believe and stay the course right underneath, but it's that same thing <laughs> for believe and stay half the course of the whole book. <laughs> Alright, I have bad news about that. I looked it up I kept looking at it and then i realized this guy has that same book same everything just he changes it for every team (laughs) (laughs) you can get that for the clemson tigers you can get that for literally any i love this man then all right so with them having the holy scriptures behind them do we think the cardinals are going to be over and uh over under i got him at 80 about a, i see him at 500 that's what i got written down here i don't necessarily i i don't know what do we see him at they've had the weirdest they they're probably the team that has the widest amount of fluctuating i've seen uh pakota projects them at 78 wins DraftKings has their win total at 86 and a half uh i've seen them as high as 88 89 i've seen them as low as like 78 so um, they're all over the place, so I will just tell you that I think the Cardinals this year are probably going to take a slight, slight decline. Um, and I know that Nick was focusing a lot on Arenado, and obviously there are concerns about what Arenado does outside of Coors Field. Uh, we know certain things like the glove will translate. Is he going to be the the plus plus hitter that he was? We'll have to wait and see. But you look besides Goldschmidt and Arenado, it's not a great lineup. Statistically, last year they had the worst outfield in all of baseball by a wide mile between O'Neill, Bader, and Fowler. I know Fowler's gone, but now they're relying on on a rookie Carlson, on another guy, Lane Thomas, who's just proven to be a, a replacement-level guy. So to me, their lineup is lacking. Um, behind Flaherty, their rotation is really not all that good. Carlos Martinez is a roller coaster. Wayne Wright, I think, is going to take a step back. Ponce de Leon and Gant are just guys. And then when you look at the bullpen, it's it's Alex Reyes who hasn't been able to stay healthy. Um, they, they, they have a lot of hard-throwing arms. The bullpen's actually better, I think, than some people may think. But I, to me, this is like 84 wins written all over them. Nick. So, And I don't know if that'll be good enough to win the NL Central or not. That's the thing. It might be. It might not be. But I think like 84, 85 maximum is where the Cardinals are looking. Nick. Um. Yeah, they're it's NL Central. They're all kind of like similar teams. I would say they're probably around five hundred, um, give or take. But it's also the Cardinals, so they have Black Magic, and they'll probably win ten more games than they should. I assume they're going to be under. I think they're a five hundred team, unless 
unless Carlson all of a sudden whacks like forty homers or does something absolutely ridiculous and like here's the here's the thing though like how many how many times have the cardinals had an outfield prospect that people were excited about only for them to disappoint and then the cardinals trade them and then they just move on like happened with gritchick piscotti rosarena tommy fam um it's happening right now with like o'neill and bader like why do we suddenly think that dylan carlson is going to end up being an all-star i don't think he'll necessarily be an all-star but i I I just said like unless he goes off, I don't see them really being anything. I mean, Dylan Carlson's considered a top twenty prospect in all of baseball. That's pretty lofty, and I know that that's probably high from what like Gruk and Piscotty were. But 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 like, all, in terms of like the Cardinals outfield, I think the problem with them is they like in terms of like a Rosarena and guys like that. I think they take small sample sizes and sort of say like, oh, he didn't do well at this point, so we're going to let him go. Why they were high on Bader, I don't know. O'Neal, O'Neal is supposed to be like some stud offensively, and he hasn't proven that. I I don't understand. I, I don't understand unless they think like unless their logic was, oh, we don't think Mark, we didn't think Marco Gonzalez was that good. I don't, I, I couldn't tell you. But on that note, let's move on to the winners of this weird division. Uh, Tim's hometown Chicago Cubs, who went 34 and 26, uh, in terms of transactions. Jesus Christ, show killer. God, he is the worst. Just the worst. Just the worst the person worst. alive. <laughs> oh, now we got. Okay. Go on. Go on, bro. Your show. You lead. Oh, well, all right, we're leading here. Uh, continuing on, again, another team that really didn't do a whole heck of a lot, but I'm sure Tim will tell me I'm missing something major they did. They traded you, Sorry about that. They traded away you, Darvish, so they got a lot in the loss column, traded you, Darvish, uh, to the Padres for and Victor Carantini, for Zach Davis, Rennell Persenio, yes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes, and Santana, Ismail Mania, and outfielder Owen Cassie. Uh, that was about it, I believe. I'm probably missing something that I just can't see. Um, that was the they biggest... lost Lester. They lost what? Well, they lost Lester. They Lester lost left Quintana. in free agency. Can... They lost yeah, Hamels. Can... Hamels wasn't there last year. Hamels was Atlanta. Oh yeah, Hamels was there last year. That's right. They lost a lot of guys on the pitching side, but in terms of, like, additions, not really a whole heck of a lot. Um, I mean, they didn't do a lot, but I don't think they're really expected to do a lot either. They did sign uh, a personal favorite of mine, Big Dick Jock Peterson. Patterson, sorry. Jock. Big Jock. Patterson? Peterson. Patterson? Peterson. Ted. Peterson? No, he's Peter. not a pedophile. <laughs> I'm not good with names. <laughs> Peterson. Peterson. Asked. Jesus Christ on the cross. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Chicago Cubs. Um, I'll let the hometown boy lead us off here. Okay. Where did we begin? Well, the Cubs had a really interesting offseason. They went in. Well, they lost the OF team, too. I think that that's probably their biggest uh, loss just as a whole, just the entire face of their organization. Um, the one who basically spearheaded their whole renaissance turnaround was him, and he's gone. But they went into this offseason as, as clear sellers, although they had just come off a division. I think anyone who watched this team last year would know that they're actually not very good. And the non-tendering Kyle Schwarber, letting John Lester walk, and not being willing to resign him for even like $3 million, trading you Darvish for a bunch of 16-year-olds, that would all indicate, okay, yeah, they're selling. But th then, like a couple months ago, something changed where they signed Jock Peterson to a one-year deal. And Jock Peterson is, is clearly a guy who, at you know, close to 29 years old, they're expecting him to, to contribute immediately and be their everyday left fielder to replace Schwarber. And I actually like the move. They signed Jake Arrieta. Uh, bring him back, and he's certainly not the pitcher he was, but again, that's sort of a, hey, let's try to get this veteran to, to come in and stabilize this rotation a little bit. They did the same thing with Trevor Williams. 
Um, they signed Brandon Workman, who's another veteran uh, reliever. Like, a lot of these additions came late in the offseason. So part of me is thinking, like, this team originally had plans to actually, like, sell and do a full-on rebuild before they looked at this division. And they're like, holy crap. There's no team that really stands out, so we can still win this while still slashing payroll. And so that's where I think that they're looking right now. I, it's a lineup that actually looks pretty good and would be really, really good if Brian and Baez in particular can return to where they were. I know both of them were awful last year, but the rotation behind Hendricks is going to be really bad. The bullpen as a whole is going to be just really, really bad, and then that's including Craig Kimbrell. Um, David Ross has only 60 games of, of managing experience under his belt at the end of the day. So to me, this is a team that is clearly a step or two behind teams like Milwaukee and maybe even a step or two behind St. Louis. So I'm, I'm a little bit more down on the Cubs this year, but they're another team who I've seen their projections all over the place. Nick. Yep. Offensively solid. I like Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, Contreras, Peterson. It's it's all pretty solid through there, but pitching wise, just outside of Hendricks, kind of drops off a little bit. So that's the biggest question mark. But and all central again, it's going to be pretty average. It's going to be competitive. So they'll they'll hang they'll hang around. Good enough to compete. Uh, I look at the Cubs, and I see a team that's probably going to be in the mix. Because be, I, they'll have guys who will carry them. I think Javi Baez will. Javi Baez, Chris Bryant, and Anthony Rizzo might have one last hurrah all together. So maybe we'll see them kind of outperform their projections. Uh, Lee Hendricks is a good pitcher. He's very underrated, honestly, a lot of times. Uh. <clears throat> They also have, let's not forget, MVP vocator Ryan Tapera. So we can't, you know, you can't overlook guys like that in the bullpen. Uh, I think they'll be in the mix at the NL Central. It's not really that deep. Of a, it's not that deep. They'll be in the mix for how long, I don't know. I think they got a lot of question marks. They might be a team that flips some of their bigger guys. So we'll see. Uh Let's start. Let's get these over unders going, boys. Tim, what do we got? What's the number? Eighty five. Gotta give me the number. Eighty five. Uh, I'll take the under on that. I think that it's probably closer to an eighty two, maybe even eighty one twin team. Like to me, it's a it's a lineup that has the potential to be good, but the pitching is just not going to come around this year. They're going to be about five hundred. So I will go. I will go under. Nick. Under as well. And I agree. I think you're gonna. I think they sell at the deadline. All right, moving on to the NL West. We're gonna start at the bottom with the Arizona Diamondbacks, who had a record last year of 25 and 35. They were bad in terms of off season. Uh, not a lot in terms of noteworthy guys. Uh, they did sign K. They did. They got Kayla Smith. Uh, they did sign Chris Devincheck. Devin T to a major league contract. Uh, a part. Oh, and they also did sign a Struble Cabrera. They signed Tyler Clippard. And that's about it on the big league side of things. A lot of minor league deals, a lot of, and they did get a guy in the rule five draft, but not a lot, not a lot in the way of, uh, sexiness for the Arizona Ironbacks. Uh, any thoughts? Don't forget about Trace Thompson. Yeah, Trace Thompson. Any thoughts on the Arizona? Diamondbacks? I remember Trace Thompson. Is that where he is now? Yeah, yeah, that's where he is. Uh, any oh, any thoughts? Yeah. Any thoughts on the Arizona Diamondbacks? Starting with Nick. Um, Diamondbacks. Well, they got Mad Bum, and they've got Marte. And as far as Desert Trash goes, that could get them pretty far, but Desert they're bad. Trash. All right. Yeah. Tim, anything to add? Well, I, I have to add the fact that are you talking about oh are you talking about Cattell Marte, not Starling Marte, right? Yeah. They had Starling, but yeah. Cattell Marte, yeah, I I don't know. This team to me, um 
they would be such a clear last place team if it wasn't for the Rockies, and we're going to get to the Rockies They're here. Next. They're um, next. Don't worry. But we'll the Diamondbacks, them. I mean, Mad Bum was terrible last year. I mean, really bad. And he's yeah. only going to get worse. Luke Weaver was bad last year. Zach Gallon's actually pretty good. Um, but I think he's starting the year hurt, right? He's got a, like a stress fracture in his forearm. So that is obviously a big, big blow for them. Um, there's a couple guys in the lineup I like, like Marte, Escobar is good. I still think Christian Walker can be a guy, although he's already 30 years old, which is a little bit concerning. They're going to be a pretty mediocre to below mediocre club this year, and especially when they're going to be playing the Dodgers and Padres that combined, you know, 40 times or so. It's just going to be absolutely brutal for them. So, uh, I, I am not crazy high on them, and I think the big reason is because of their pitching, though. Yeah, poor, poor Cattell Marte, who has to stick it out in Arizona. Uh, to quote a uh, late great actress, I'd rather be dead than alive in Arizona, and I'm sure that's how he feels at this point. It's not. It's going to be a rough year for your D-backs fan, and I apologize sincerely for having to play the Dodgers and Padres about 40 times. I'm so sorry. I apologize from the deepest part of my darkened heart. Um, over under, we have them at 60 wins, according to what I have. That's probably very wrong. Oh, 60 wins? 60 wins. They are projected. Yeah, to I'll win. take the over on that. <laughs> I think we'll all take the over <laughs> on that one. Over, Tim, as well. I'm looking. Uh, I don't know how you got 60 wins here, Brandon. DraftKings has them at 74 and a half. Well, sorry. Just on 72. Like and a half. Well, sorry. I, got, I literally just clicked on the first link I saw. So if I'm wrong, it's. I apologize. Well, if it's okay. over under 70, um, okay. So if it's over under 70, I'll go the over. If it's over under like 75 and a half, I'll take the under. Uh, I'll so take... I think anywhere between 70 and 75 wins for me. Yeah. Okay. I'll split They're that. I'll go like 68 and like 73. We'll go 75 and a half. Well, yeah. I mean, like, like it's it's not we're not all terribly far off like we think it'll probably be somewhere in the low 70s and they're going to be a struggling team in in a very top heavy division yeah so so 70 ish win so okay so te- so technically over on all of us technically i guess if the number is well, if the number is sixty and a half, which is wrong, then yes. But well, I don't that's what I'm think saying. That like that's up, what it is. I the think updated that's number. Yeah, the updated number I I'll go with is seventy five and a half. I'll go. I'll take the under. Then under. Okay. I take the under as well. All right, moving on to the team that did absolutely nothing noteworthy in the off season, and of course we're talking about the twenty six and thirty four from last year, Colorado Rockies, who traded no one big. In the worst scam I've ever seen in my entire existence, <clears throat> nothing noteworthy happened to them. Oh, right, nothing, nothing big happened to the Colorado Rockies. It's not like they traded Nolan Arenado for absolute trash and money. Um, Rockies suck. That's about. That's my take. Anyone want to add anything? <sighs> They'll hit some home runs. Yeah, I'd like to. Rockies suck. <laughs> Uh, is there anything we want to? They got they got Herman Marquez, who was destined to get traded, and they got old man Charlie Blackman, and Trevor Story, who's alone on an island, just dying to live. Nick, why don't you go ahead? Uh, Rockies are bad. They suck. Um, pitching is, you know, Marquez is all right. John Gray's all right, but they're also going to be pitching in Colorado. So then. Those numbers, it's going to be tough for them. And then offensively, they'll have some inflation because they play in Coors. But, yeah, there's nothing really standing out except for, like, Trevor Story. All right. Over, under, we got for them is... Where are they? Sorry. Uh, 63 and a half. I desperately want Herman... I was going to say, I desperately want Herman Marquez to get traded just because, like, his 200 strikeouts a year, 
and like you look at his home and road splits and it's and his you know FIP and all that and you could clearly see that or what's Nick what's the stat that's like the ballpark adjusted ERA is that just ERA plus uh yes yeah like I bet if you look at his ERA plus it would show that he's actually one of the better pitchers in all of baseball but just toiling in Coors Field can't be good for him or his health to be honest with you so I I wish he would get a change of scenery and like obviously story's good and Blackman's good, but I mean there's only so much you can work with there. All right, over under we got them at sixty three and a half wins. Oof. Tim. It's a really it's a really good number to put them at because I was like thinking like low sixties. I mean I'll I will go I will go under in the chance that perhaps they trade some veterans as the year goes on. Um, I will go under and think maybe they're like 62 or a 63. So it's not, I, I don't think they're, I think they're going to hit 60 wins, but it's not going to be by much. So I'll go that under 63 and a half. Nick. Uh, yeah, I'll go under. I think they're about 60. And to sweep it where I am under as well. Uh, Moving on, we are now on to the San Francisco Giants, who went 29-31, and 31, who are managed by the weirdest manager I have ever heard of in Gabe Gapler, who apparently doesn't eat ice cream. He just licks it and spits it out like a freak. Uh, in terms of trans. Ooh, Tommy La Stella. Yeah, they got La Slugga, who was an angel legend for the past few years. La Slugga, Mr. 3 a.m., baby. Mr. 3 a.m., uh, in terms of signings, they did sign Justin, for, another former Angel legend, Justin Bohr, to a major league deal. Uh, nothing really, they did, and also Tommy Lasella, as mentioned. In terms of everything else, not really a whole heck of a lot for these Giants. They signed Ageless Wonder Scott Casimir, who's 37 years old. Uh, also got Alex Wood, and that. Looks to be about it in terms of the transaction points. Oh, they also did get Anthony D. F- Anthony Delfiscani, but not a whole heck of a lot for this Giants team. Um, stop laughing at me. I never claim to be good at reading. Nick, what do you think about your rivals? There's, it's just there's... nowhere close. It's... I don't care. Boo passed it. I blacked out for a second. What name did he mispronounce? Brandon, I'm just I'm just letting you know all of the pronunciations for all of these players are available on Baseball Reference. Anyone you want to know? Yeah, anyone, well, phonetically. Don't care. Good. Don't care. I'm like Stu Gotts reading reading ads. I I blame the writers. I blame Roy. All right, Nick, Where's go ahead. Roy? Um, Giants. They're building something, but it's they're not there yet. It's going to take some more time. Tim. Uh, so it's funny because we look at the Giants and, and I think Nick hit it right on the head. They are building something and they were near 500 last year, probably surprising a lot of people. Um, they got a couple guys. Donovan Solano was great and he's just tearing it up this spring again. Mike Yastrzemski broke out too. As a team last year, they had the fifth highest team batting average in all of baseball. They hit like 263. So like Solano, Yastrzemski, I think will be good again. Evan Longoria is tearing it up in spring. Um, Alex Dickerson and Brandon Belt are a couple like above average hitters as well. So like offensively, it's not a sexy lineup by any means, but I think they could actually do some damage if a few of those guys is like breakouts are, are for real. I like Tommy LaStella a lot as a utility guy. I don't know if I love him as an everyday first baseman, but that's only the case until, uh, Brandon Belt is back. Um, rotation wise, eh, I don't. I, I think Aaron Sanchez is pretty terrible, and they're relying on, on him quite a bit. Anthony DiSclefani is pretty average. Cueto is pretty much done, uh, if we're being honest. So I think the rotation has huge question marks, but I like the bullpen a lot. They added a number of uh, veteran free agents there. Jake McGee is going to be closing some games for them. So hopefully they can get by with an offense that's good and an improved bullpen. I, I think that they are going to be, and I'm curious to see what their win totals at, but I think they're going to be a little bit better than what some people may think. Uh, and that once they're sort of dissimilar where it's, they're playing the Padres and Dodgers 40 times. It's going to be hard to 
hard to manage an upper upper like top tier, but who knows? Still still probably a third place team. And the over under for the Giants. We see them at seventy five and a half wins. Nick, over under seventy five and a half. Um I'll take the over. Over. Okay. What was the what was the total again? Seventy five and a half. Over. Over. You said over too. I'll take. I think. I'll say over, but maybe they're closer to five hundred. Maybe more than anything. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it'll. I'm not saying that it's going to be way over like playoff team, but I think probably around five hundred. I think they're more than good enough there, especially with how bad Arizona and Colorado are going to be. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> And sorry, I gotta finish something. All right, moving on to a team that absolutely also did nothing this offseason, nothing of note worthy of noting. Nothing. The San Diego Padres, who finished last year at the record of twenty of thirty seven and twenty three, they only acquired Yu Darvish, Blake Snell, uh, this offseason. You know, nothing major, nothing major. Not fixing a having a godly rotation alongside and lead the show cover athlete Fernando Tatis Jr alongside also mega superstar former Dodger legend Manny Machado, you know, a team that's just going to, you know, be mediocrity and awful uh, next year, I assume. Uh, Tim, what do you think about the San Diego Padres? Um, I mean, there's no really other way to put it. Like, I know that they're a team that made a ton of moves and a lot of times offseason hype ends up uh, – not really leading to, to wins at the end of the day, but I mean, they're really, really good. I mean, you Darvish has been for the last year and a half. Now, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, Blake Snell's great. Um, Joe Musgrove, Chris Paddock, I think are great additions there. When Mike Clevenger joins that rotation again next year, it's just going to be absolutely filthy. Uh, the lineup, you know, Tatis and Machado back to back is going to be really, really good. Um, I, I Maybe they are going to be a little bit worse than some people think, and I only say that because certain guys like Hosmer uh, and Will Myers, who had really good years last year, might go down just a little bit. So, I, I mean, they're still going to finish probably at worst, like 90 or 91 wins, and should absolutely be a playoff team again. Nope. Totally agree. Nick? Yeah, they're good. They just got to put it together. There's a lot of hype around them. It's always tough to tell when teams are just kind of thrown in together. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. But Tatis is good. Hopefully he can keep it up. I kind of see a drop-off typically among players around their third year. Kind of the league knows how to adjust to them by now. So we'll see if that's true for Tatis. Uh, Machado, he's terrible. He should just retire. <laughs> The Padres are good. Make no bones about it. Make no bones about it. They're they're good. It's going to be a two team race. It's the Padres and Dodgers. For you know, I've seen you Darvish pitch in the playoffs. I'm not too confident that he has what it takes. I see someone still bitter. All right, over under ninety four and a half wins for the San Diego, the San Diego, uh, San Diego Padres, San Diego. Some call it ninety four. I'll take over. Over, Tim. For what it's worth, what it's worth, Nick, you saw you Darvish pitch in the playoffs when a certain team knew what certain pitches were coming. It's true. Um, so I don't know if we can really hold you Darvish's playoff numbers against him. Um, they, he actually worked really hard to get past that playoff sort of combustion there, and it really was up until 2019 in the middle of the year where he started working on some things, and he's been absolutely dominant ever since. So I, I think that him in that ballpark, him and Snell will just be great. Uh, 94 and a half. I will, I will, I'll go over, I'll just say 95. Um, I, they're, they're going to be a clear step behind the Dodgers in a, in a couple different areas, but it's, it's a very good team. They are. Uh, I'm going to say over, I think they actually flirt with the hundred wins. I think you're, they'll be the top wild card team. Um, I see them closer to a hundred wins than like 95 wins, but so over. All right. Last but not least. Some would say they won the World Series last year. They may or may not be arguably the best team in baseball. We are, of course, talking about the Dodgers. 
Yeah, do it in a full season. Yeah, do, not going to win a game. Yeah, do it in a full season, Dodgers, you stupid bums. Uh, in terms of the off season, I don't recall anything major, but I'm also not looking at the transactions just yet. Give me a second. Uh, but do you really not? Do you really not remember? Well, oh, they right. added Trevor. They signed. They one. signed some bum named Trevor Bauer. That's about it yeah. for a metric butt ton of money. Who, it's only three years. It's fine. That I mean, but this two team, years really. Let's be honest. This team really didn't have to do a whole hell of a lot. It's very true. Nick, what do you have to say about your Dodgers, who may or may not be the World Series champions? Um, This is probably the best Dodgers team ever. On paper, they're going to win over 100 games. Um, Yeah, it's basically the same team as last year, minus some Kike and Jock. But you got Gavin Lux coming up, and that's going to be really good. Uh, Chris, Taylor should, Chris Taylor and AJ Pollock should kind of hold down left field. And then you also got Trevor Bauer and David Price back into that rotation. So there's no, yeah, it's sky's the limit for the Dodgers. Tim, anything to add? Nick, can you admit that Trevor Durant is a little bit overrated just as a whole? I don't know. I've always called him the Dodgers fifth starter. That's true. You actually have, because like, I know ERA is an archaic stat, but aside from 2018 and last year, uh, the lowest ERA he's ever had in a season is 4.18. So basically, a year and a half, he's been one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, and he's been in the, the league now for nine years. So that's just – that's just I'm going to throw that out there. But here's the thing. Going back to the Dodgers, they don't need him to be elite. They need him to be – yeah, pretty good because Clayton Kershaw is going to do what Clayton Kershaw always does. Walker Bueller is only going to continue to get better. Julio Urias, I think, proved last year that he is more than ready to to take on a big role with that team. We know the lineup's going to be great. I think Seager's due for a big year and a contract season. So, I yeah, the Dodgers to me, I would be shocked if they win less than a hundred games this year. They're good. Yeah, you got yeah Kershaw, you got Bauer. I mean, you got yeah, well, you got Bauer, you got Bueller. Urias, and then you also got Dustin May, who's really good. Heater. Who wins and that then, five spot for him? <laughs> uh, I would say I would say May. Over Price. Yeah, yeah. I think Price kind of comes out of the bullpen more, and then yeah, I think Gonsolin also comes up. I think it's going to be Gonsolin Price out of the bullpen, or spot starters when they need lefty righty. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good stuff. They're good. I don't have to. The, I got nothing to add. Over under a hundred one wins, a one on one and a half wins for the Dodgers. Homer boy, I'll take over. Uh, oof. I'll go. Yeah, I'll take the over as well. I think one hundred two, one hundred three is is a very realistic expectation. I know I've seen some sports books even have their total at like one hundred three and a half, which, I mean, is just crazy to see in general. Uh, for for a preseason projection, but. I think Nick hit it on the head. They're they're a team that's probably the best they've put together yet. And they've won, yeah. They should have won, like, in a full season last year, they were on pace for 116 games, which is insane. And they've, 2019, they won 106, and they were considerably better than they were in 2019, which is crazy. So. Over. I, they're disgusting. They're disgusting. All right, so that wraps up the NL. So for posterity's sake, we're gonna put a bookend. Filthy. On... <laughs> we're gonna put a bookend on this part. Uh, we're gonna take. Well, I don't know why, why I'm saying this. We're gonna take a short break if we're not gonna put this up in episodic. But the NL portion is done. So on the front, on the back side of this one, I'm gonna thank Nick for joining us for at least the NL portion, and Tim, thanks for coming back on the podcast. So uh, that was the NL portion, and we'll be back for the AL portion. So thanks guys. We'll uh, catch you on the next one. Bye.